of more than 7,000 islands has had its share of religious strife, ethnic tension, and violence. For years, we have worked to achieve peace in Mindanao in southern Philippines. The peace process was recently dealt a setback by violence carried out by lawless renegade elements of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. But we are fully committed to the peace process. There is no alternative to peace. We are working to reach as much progress as possible on peace within the parameters set out by authentic dialogues with communities. However, before we can actively and effectively reactivate the peace process again in earnest, we must first bring back stability to the island, restore order, and be able to trust that responsible elements of the MILF have regained control. Religious leaders can speed up dialogue and reconciliation. They are our partners in the peacemaking process. The historic divide between Christians and Muslims in our country is narrowing dramatically. This is in no small part due to our focus on interfaith dialogue and a willingness to accept the sincerity of those who differ with us in faith. The Bishop and Ulama Conference is our format for interfaith dialogue. It is a movement of Catholic and Christian bishops and Muslim ulamas organized to promote mutual understanding of faiths and religions for peace. We all want to see peace and prosperity in the Philippines. Through interfaith dialogue, under the leadership of the Bishop and Ulama Conference, through global engagement with the largest possible international involvement, including the UN, Saudi Arabia, Brunei, Indonesia, Libya, Malaysia, and others in the Organization of the Islamic Conference, Spain, Sweden, and the EU, the US, Japan, Australia, and other bilateral ODA partners. And through economic assistance at the community level, we are confident that peace will happen. Mr. President, three years ago, we had the honor of chairing the first summit on interfaith dialogue here in the UN. At the regional level, we are one of the conveners of an ongoing series of Asia-Pacific interfaith dialogues that began in Indonesia in 2004. Subsequent dialogues were held in the Philippines in 2006, New Zealand in 2007, and Cambodia in 2008. Presently, we are preparing to host a special non-aligned movement ministerial meeting on interfaith dialogue and cooperation for peace and development scheduled in May of 2009. Our participation today in this initiative on culture of peace advances our relationship with Middle Eastern and Islamic nations. Their support in carrying out our interfaith dialogues has been critical to our progress in promoting peace in Southern Philippines. What we are doing together here today and tomorrow is every bit more powerful than bullets, military tanks, and armaments to fight those who bring misery and violence to people at home or across the globe. We must follow our faith and have faith in each other if we are to truly lift up the poor, transform war into peace, and stamp down the intolerance and hatred wrought by a false reading of the divine message. We maintain high hopes in interfaith dialogue as a means for building bridges to replace barriers between communities of different cultures and ethnicity. We are here today united by our faith and determined to bridge the valley that unnecessarily divides us, whether we live across the street, across rivers, or across oceans and continents. We can and must bridge the divide to the alliance of civilizations so that we can advance the common good of humanity. Let us embrace the power of dialogue here, today, and tomorrow for peace, development, and human dignity. Let us adopt draft resolution number A, stroke 63, stroke L24, revision one 
on the promotion of interreligious and intercultural dialogue, understanding, and cooperation for peace. I thank you.